the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, His Lordship the His Lordship the Chief Justice, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Right Honorable Deputy Chief Justice, the Right Honorable Prime Minister Designate, and all the big and small people. I want to thank the Honorable Rugorovi Amos. You heard how he very well presented the budget. My job is, uh, you had the budget, so the comments I make are just to clarify a few points. The first point is an ideology and a strategic one, which I always try to clarify whenever I get opportunity. The issues I have seen in Uganda here for the last 70 years have been mainly, which, which some people don't grasp very well, and that's why we waste quite a bit of time. It seems there is a struggle between the producers of wealth and the parasites. Fortunately, by a good historical accident, I belonged to the producers of wealth. In Tungamo, where I was born and uh, partially grew, grew up in, in the 1940s, 1950s, you had the following wealth creators. People were creating wealth, not eating what they don't produce. You had cattle keepers, in which activity I was involved. Myself, directly, there is no work involving cattle, which I didn't do myself with my own hands. Then we had crop farmers for food. Bananas, sweet potatoes, millet. Millet was very, very much used at that time in those areas. These were wealth creators. We had a few people who were catching a shonzi. A shonzi are uh, mud fish. I think they call it the mud fish. There were some families who were doing that. We didn't have proper fishermen because we were a bit far from the water, but we had these people who were catching uh, fish. Then we had artisans, blacksmith, Abahesi, a man called Manyoro. We had uh, 
carpenters who are making wooden buckets, making milk pots, making all sorts of wooden products. And then, in other, in Tonga, we didn't have any cash crop growers in the, in the 1940s, 50s, no. We were all our Korachida, Chonka, working only for the stomach. But in some of the neighboring sub-counties, like Ndeja, and also in Igara, Chamhunga, Cheizova, a few areas of Shema, they had started some cash crops. We were hearing cash crops like coffee, and uh, in Chamhunga, tea was started in the 1950s. So, we were wealth creators, all of us, many of us. Then we had a few service people who were doing servicing. We had a few Indians, I think there were like four, plus two Arabs. The Indians were Abdara, Mamdari, the, the Arabs were, one was called uh, Wumbakare, which is the Kenyan colonization of Abu Bakar. They were calling him Wumbakare. Then we had uh, a Nubian in Kakuru, uh, Kamisi. Because he was so black that the, the nails were, were black, they thought he didn't wash. So they were calling him the one with, without washed nails, Charakitanava. But he was providing a service of transport. When we visited the National Park, as a class in 1958, I think it was his au pair of vehicle which took us. So, all of men, the majority of us were wealth creators in agriculture artisanship, all services. And in this, we were assisted by partners. People used to come from Kampara here, a man called Warusim Mpanga, he would come and buy our cows and bring them to Kampara for slaughter. So that one was our partner. We had another man called Buchenya in Mbarara. He was a, Muslim, a fat Muslim man. His real name is, these are Baganda of Ankore. His real name was Bukenya. But because Banyangore cannot easily pronounce Bukenya, they say Buchenya. So that one was also buying cows, bringing them to Mbarara. And then there was a, 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 a European called Shea who was buying cows and taking them to, to Chirembe for slaughter there. So these were, were our partners. And we were selling, I used to sell milk sometimes to the Indians and also to some other groups like Sambanya Rwanda who had migrated there. Emine Rwanda called Kanyandeku. I used to take milk there and sell it to him because he wanted it. So therefore, because we were wealth creators, 
and we had our partners. We had no problem of sectarianism. You couldn't hear people talking of Indians, that Indians are a problem. No. Because the Indians were the ones bringing us what we did not have. Those Indians, Udara and so on. And all these groups, the Baganda, you hear, Warusimbi and the others are the ones who are buying our cows. At that time, the Banyankwere were not so much in trade. Then you had the Banyarwanda buying some of our products. So ideologically, because we are people involved in wealth creation, we have no time for sectarianism. Because we need one another. If I am Mount Baganda, who will buy my cows? If I am Mount Indians, who will bring what I don't have? Who will bring the, the salt? Who will bring the, the textiles? Who will bring the, the paraffin? That time we were still using tadobas. So therefore, this ideology of sectarianism was part of the pseudo ideology pushed by parasites. This is why I want us really to focus on this difference between producers of wealth versus parasites. The producers of wealth are wealth creators and also job creators. You can imagine that even at that very low level of, of economic activity, we were creating jobs. We would sell our cows to Warusi in Bimpanga, but there were, there were no, vehicle, no lorries at that time to carry cows. So Warusi in Bimpanga would have to employ people to drive the cows, to walk the cows. They call it Tokufunya. These people would walk the cows all the way from Ntungamu to Kampara. These were jobs. You can imagine, even in our very, very low level, we were already creating jobs. I look after cows. We sell them to Warusi Mpanga. Warusi Mpanga employs people to, to, to walk the cows all the way to Kampara. So, how do the parasites, the, the, how do the opportunists come in, the sectarian people, to bring tribes, religion? How do they come in? It was because I think we, you cannot easily bring tri sectarianism where, where I am. Because I will tell you to go to hell, because I am a producer of wealth. I owe nothing to nobody. In fact, I think if we are not busy with the school system, I don't think this sectarian politics would, would have taken root in a, a place like Ankore. And that's why when the NRM came, sectarian politics disappeared. Because what are you saying? I owe nothing to you. I am here looking after my cows. I'm here growing my crops. I am here an artisan. What are you telling me? To be against the other one, against the other one. He's the one who is buying my products. You are a shaitani. Go away. So that's how the NRM came and really scorched this nonsense. Now, when the NRM won, two groups tried to fight the NRM. The parasites, and I think some of the confused people who didn't know enough about us. Like they would go to the north and tell people in Achori, ah, the, 
these people are coming to kill you and so on. So they, they create uh, fear. But with time, as you have seen, the people in the north were able to know who, 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 the, who the NRM are. Then the, the, those groups who are fighting NRM tried to organize a rebellion. We defeated the rebellion by three things, mobilizing the people, using combined arms, and improving technology. So when the rebellion was defeated, what you have now is isolated crime. Like you have seen here in Kampala, the people have been killed. The Muslim sheikhs were killed that time. John Kagezi, Kawesi, Chirumira. Now recently they attempt on, on Katumba and the killing of the daughter and the driver. This is definitely by parasites. Because we are busy, we are busy producing wealth. People are busy. Farmers are busy, fishermen are busy. The people with small factories are busy. So who, who are you? Instead of working, you go to attack people. Who are you? You want to cause fear. You want to stop the, 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 the Ugandans. If it was not for Corona, in fact, now I am a, I'm a bit lonely now, because otherwise they dance the whole night and noise and so on. And the guards of Kwema and Sora, they... That's what Ugandans like. They like nice life. Now these days I just sleep, there is no noise, no noise because of Corona. When Corona goes, I want my people to go back to freedom, to, 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 to pleasure making. That's what I want them to do. So therefore, I am here to, to tell the parasites that we shall crush them. Because we crushed the rebellion. You remember the rebe rebellion was open, open to challenge us. Now this one is like a jigger. In the primary school, I had a, a few times I had a problem of jigger entered my, my feet. Now, when the jigger enters your, your, your foot, the whole foot is, is, is itching. The whole foot. Now, if you are not clever, you say, let me cut off the whole foot. Because the jigger has entered me, then you will make a mistake. What you do, you, you, you go carefully. You see where the jigger is. I, I was an expert in handling that one. You go carefully, you see where, you see where, the, the when I'm going to say, the eye of the, first of all, you see where the jigger is. But even when you where it is, you don't go just anyhow. You go for the eye, they call it the eye of the jigger. There is where it is, it, I think it is, it is breathing, it is breathing through that space. This is the one you start with, you start with the eye, you don't, you don't go to, so this is how we, we are handling this problem of, of the criminals. That's why we don't put roadblocks. You see, you can be provoked, you put roadblocks, you put what? People don't move. No, 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 no. 
I will not put roadblocks. No, because roadblocks stop the one who is, uh, who is uh, guilty and the one who is not guilty. Narumanya, Nesarumanya, no. We shall never use roadblocks. Mm -mm. We must look for the eye of the jigger. And in order to do when I addressed the parliament in 20, I think it was 2018, I laid out the steps. The step number one are the human sources. The human sources. People will tell you, the one who saw, the one who heard. But as the, the Honorable Guru was saying in the budget, were put for technical means, which we have already started deploying. The cameras. You have seen how those cameras have helped us to see what was happening. And once the police wakes up and uses them more effectively, you will see how they will help us to control crime. But also, in the, my 2018 speech, I spoke about the digital monitors to be installed in every vehicle, every picky picky. That project has de delayed, was delayed. I don't know why it delayed. General Tumwine was handling it. Even Katumba, even Katumba was involved in that project. This morning I was talking with the, the new Minister of State for the proposed Minister for Internal Affairs, David Mose. What happened to my project? Why has it not been implemented? Because I don't want any more wasting time in investigations. Every vehicle must have a digital monitor. Every piki piki must have a digital monitor, centrally monitored. If you try to remove it, we shall see you and go for you. You touch it like this, the system will show us that somebody is trying to remove that, uh, that digital monitor. And the digital monitor will show us where you are at any one time, if we are interested in you. We have no interest in your clandestine activities. As long as you are not near the scene of the crime. As soon as, as, soon as there is a, a crime, we go. Which vehicles were here? So instead of wasting time, this one, you wait, wait, no, it will be much easier. So I really demand, this is the, the I, I have told uh, General Mhozi, the, 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 the CDF and uh, Minister, designate for Minister of State to check what has happened to that uh, plan. Because we would not be wasting time looking here. No. Which vehicle was here? Which vehicle, which picky picky was here when this happened? Then we shall not, not be wasting time. It's not really that difficult to stop this uh, these parasites, I call them a name which you, I call them, you know, the, the other four-legged animal. It, it, it's not me, it is Jesus. Jesus is the one who said, who said so in the Bible. He said, don't put your valuable things before pigs. Because because the, the pigs don't appreciate value. So if you put uh, value before pigs, they, they will trample on the, on the valuable things. The third solution is forensic capacity. Forensic. Criminals will never commit a crime and not leave a trace. It's not, it's not possible. 
even these criminals who shot at Katumba, they were seen. One of them dropped a handkerchief, a, a, a cloth, dropped a cloth. It, was, it is on the, on, the, on, the, on the videos. Lokech told me. I, I haven't seen those, I have not watched, but Lokech told me. So this, one of them dropped a cloth. But our people picked the cloth and took it away. The villagers, when they come, they should not have touched that cloth. Because that cloth has got all the story about you, the thief. It has got your DNA, your sweat. You sweat there a little bit, but QAD. We shall take it to the laboratory. The DNA will tell us this was M7 who was here. So the forensic, the forensic capacity of the police has now improved. We can quickly, <coughs> but you must respect the scene of crime. The person who took the cloth, Yat Korabubi. And if you still have it, please bring it back. Although you have added your own sweat and your own what, maybe there's still some chance of, if you have not washed it, there may be a chance of helping us. Now, one of the techniques we developed after 2018 after this one, I got it from the police. I didn't know. The police are the ones who told me. They call it fingerprinting, fingerprinting the guns. I didn't know that each gun had its own fingerprint. But these policemen knew, they told us in our security meeting, they said, eh, but you can fingerprint the, fingerprint, fingerprint the guns. So I said, okay, you do it now. So they have fingerprinted most of all the, I think either all or, or, or most of the guns in Uganda. And what Lokech is telling me, they have already known the fingerprint of, of, this, of these guns which were used in the Katumba incident. They have already known the fingerprints. Then we have got other digital means which I don't want to talk about because the, the criminals are also listening. So I should not talk about everything. Can they care out? But also, when it becomes necessary, the alertness of the public. Because if the public is alerted, although I don't want you to really be on tension, you can be doing your own things, you dancing, you what, jumping. Continue with your things if it was not for corona. But when you need to, you to be alert, we shall mobilize you. Like we did in the massacre. The other day when I was giving the corona speech, I brought one of my girls, the one who helped us, to kill Chidawarime, the one who, who was killing people in the massacre. The, that was because of the mobilization of the, of the public. So I don't want Uganda, therefore, we are working very hard. The new team of security, the new Minister of Internal Affairs, the Minister of Security, I want them to solve the issue of digital monitoring. Because I don't want Uganda to be a land of bodyguards, what? No, 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 no should not have bodyguards going with us all over the place. 
We should have collective eyes which can see what is happening. Even, I, even if I don't have bodyguards with me, I, I, I will be guarded by the collective. So this bodyguarding and all that convoy is what? This is just temporary because we still have those gaps in the security infrastructure. Therefore, the schemers of insecurity are wasting their time. They only provoke us to wake up and create more capacity. Like in Karamoja, there are people who are making a mistake. They will see what will happen to them. Because I, I have got to the reports. Uh, I want those uh, fellows, the ones who are working with the Turkanas, to stop. I also contact His Excellency Kenyatta. The, the, those, those characters who are working with the Turkanas, and then they steal cows, go and hide them in Kenya. Kenya, Kenya is, is, these are our brothers. We shall go for you, join today, with the, I, I, will, I will appeal to his excellency in Kenyatta to, 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 to deal with the, 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 those uh, criminals in Karamoja. And you will see it, it will stop. The, we increased the army strength. We, we, we had brought down army strength to 40,000 in the past. Because we, we didn't want to have, a, but now we have scaled up to, to a higher figure, and we can scale up if it becomes necessary. Now, the attack on, uh, on Katumba was not, was not an ordinary crime. It's not that it's crime, crime. No, no, no. This was a definite political motive. And we shall know which pig was behind this one. Because there are different pigs. Now, this business, people who, who use assassination, these are people who are not sure of themselves. They are the ones who use assassinations. NRM never uses assassinations. Because we are sure of ourselves. Why should I kill you because you are opposing me? Why? If I am right and you are wrong, why do I kill you? I should preserve you so that you continue making your mistakes. And then the people see that I am the one who is right and you are the one who is wrong. When you kill somebody, actually you save him. Because when somebody dies, oh, that man would have done us very good things if he had lived. Maybe the man would have done nothing. But you kill him, you make him a hero. Because you don't allow him to do what he wants. You do what you want to do, let him also do what he wants so that the people can see who is right and who is wrong. Now, there are so many people I would have killed if, because they were annoying me. One of them is Sisi Ogwar. Sisi Ogwar, I used to call her Dako Marach, the bad woman. Because she, she had really a bad tongue. But if, if I had killed Siso Gwar, Siso Gwar would be a hero now. People would be saying, if Siso Gwar had not died, Great things would have happened. But now, I, I'm here with Cecil Ward, people. It's really bankrupt to kill people. The message, if I, if I had killed the message, 
messenger would be a hero in the, in the, in the memory of the people. Oh, messenger would have done a big thing if he had lived, but he was killed. That's how Jesus became a, a hero. If those Romans, if those Romans had not killed Jesus, I don't know what would have happened. So, bankrupt, bankrupt, bankrupt. If you see groups which you use assassination, those are bankrupt groups. That means they are not sure. Why should I kill you? I am sure of what I am saying. You continue saying what you are saying, but say it peacefully. Please don't disturb our peace. Then we shall see who is right. If you are right, I will join you. I will leave what I am doing and join you. If I am right, you join me. What is the problem? Why should I kill anybody? Just because we don't agree. Now, the ministers have brought to you a list of, of ministers and vice president and prime minister and left the prime ministers. I hear that many of you are Christians, but many people do not understand Christianity very well, although they talk about it. Jesus, when he, he started his movement, there were, there were intellectuals. They were called Pharisees, highly educated people. There were other people called Sadducees. There were others called Levites. These were all, I don't know, I, I would ask the Archbishop to help us with the, describing to us those highly educated people. But Jesus went for the fishermen. Jesus Jesus did not recruit Pharisees. He did not recruit Levites. He did not recruit uh, the other one, Sadducees. He went for, si for Simon Peter. And he went for the other ones. Of course, he had also some intellectuals. Because I'm told, I'm told that Luca, Luca, Luke, that Luke was a, a doctor. So please, when you look at my list, know that I'm in the path of Jesus Christ. But my list, the, because I was underground, I was working alone, because you know these things are quite, uh, when you are compiling the list, you are under a very big threat. So I was, I was operating underground alone. This is this one area where I don't need assistance. Now there is one. Of course, it, this was a, it's a fantastic and pleasant job. You are so good. So many of you are so good. I don't know what to do. 
I look at this one, I say this one, this one. But now the, the tribe, now the religion, the balance. The... In, in, in 1953, in 1952, I attended a pre-primary in a girls' school where we were only four boys. Ha. To be in a girls' school when you are boys, please, we really suffered. Those girls can be very bad. <laughs> So in 1953, I, I graduated from 1B to 1A, and I went to the primary school, the, the P, P, P1 proper. And that's where I learned all the, what do they call them, these multiplication dividings. Those signs, the, the, the dividing, the subtracting, the adding. That's why I learned. I learned those. Now, in, in forming the cabinet, I really, I really used those. I was adding, subtracting, then dividing, then coming back. So, in the process, and the people are so good, really the LRM has done a fantastic job. You MPs, you are wonderful. You are a wonderful crop. So when I'm looking there, it's all my endari. This one, but this one is good. But uh, but I must I must get the limited number. So I I uh, in, in my short list, I had got somebody, one of our people, Kavianga who was recently our mayor in Kasese. He is on my short list, but in the final, because when I surfaced, when I came from underground, and I called Domona and one of my secretaries, you type this for me, because I was hiding from. Then I forgot the, the, the Kavianga's name. But I would appeal, I want you to, Kasese must have somebody. Kavianga's name was there, but because of that being underground, there are some disadvantages in being underground, but also some advantages. Because I surprised you. I surprised you with all my fishermen, my what, my what. Now, the, in Amos Rugorovi's speech, which is a wonderful speech, as you heard, well delivered, on page seven, Page 7, para 20. That's where you have the Banyankore proverb. Banyankore proverb. Omguera katwe kenyanja. Atu no rabo tahiro wabara gurka. A mad man set fire to a swamp. And you know swamp grass does not burn easily. But it kuvaravaruka. Uh, kuvaravaruka is bust, 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 bust. Not, not burn properly, but somehow. So the NRM is like the madman. We have been struggling 
against social underdevelopment. Now, in the paragraph 20, there is some evidence that although the, the, the swamp is not fully burnt, it has at least Kubara Baruka. Because the Honorable Gorobi read, Mr. Speaker, the recently concluded household survey reports that poverty has declined from 21.4% in 2016-2017 in to 20.3% in 2019-2020. Okay, that's interesting, but not as important as the next one. Poverty rates, poverty rates reduced in West Nile, Bunyoro, and Aragon regions, among others. However, 39% of Ugandan households are still in subsistence economy. You may not understand the importance of this. This is not a negative statement. The way it is written, it sounds negative, but actually it is positive. Because you remember, in 2013, 68% of the homesteads were in the subsistence economy. 68% uh, were in subsistence economy. Now we are being told that according to the recent household census, only 39% are still in the household, in, in, in uh, what do you call it? Subsistence economy. Ooh! Which means now 61% are in the money economy. It is the 39 who are still in the subsistence. This is great news. This is great news. That means that we have really done something in the last, because we remember we started in 2013. That's when we started this campaign. And people were saying, but ah, the, the, the things we are giving, where are they going? The, the operational wealth creation has been giving, has been giving. Because I was still using the old figures of 68% in homestead income. Now, apparently, it's not that. What we have done has not been for nothing. People have moved in the money economy now. The household is 61%. It is the 39 which are still in the subsistence economy. That means we are really uh, moving. Uh, and, but but uh, it, it may not be clear if you, you are not as alert as I was when he was reading. Now, finally, two points. The, the Honorable Gorobi was talking about the human capital, the training, the what, the what, the what. But uh, another very happy uh, phenomenon, recently I met some young people, doctors, led by a young girl, a doctor, Emukenyi. Emukenyi is a doctor. Do you know about Kenyu people? Many of, you, many of you don't know our country. Yeah. But this young Emukenyi doctor and her colleagues who came with some elders, including Professor Maswa, they said, now we have a new problem. I said, what is the new problem? There are too many doctors, they can't get jobs. I said that cannot be true. We cannot have a problem of too many doctors, that some of them are, are not absorbed, they don't get jobs. So they, they stay floating on the, on, the, on the streets. That one will be cured immediately. I didn't know. If we have got too many doctors, we are now going to have doctors at the sub-county. You remember Health Center 3? How can we say we have got too many doctors? I told Professor Maswa, have you told these young people 
what WHO tells us. WHO tells us that we should be having one doctor for every 500 population. So since Uganda now is 42 million people, I think, I think they are using the figure of 42 million, it means we should be having 84,000 doctors. But we are talking of only something like, like 5,000 in the government service. So the new Minister, the, the, the new minister of Health, the, 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 the new Prime Minister, please, I don't want to hear the issue of unemployed doctors. Every doctor who qualifies must be taken on by the government. And then we scale them down to, to the sub county. Let's have a doctor at, the, at, at, at each sub county, not one. Because if you say the sub counties are just 2,000, actually, 2,000. So if we have a doctor, one at the sub county, that means we, we absorb 2,000. If we get more, we have two at, at the sub county. So that we don't have patients coming from the sub county to the district. No traffic of, of, of disease should be, should be blocked there. Only referral cases should come to, to, the, to the health center for. Because, because at that time we had, we had few doctors, we had gone up to the health center for. But since we have got many doctors now, let's go down to health center three. Have one, have two, have three, and build up so that all the diseases are localized. We don't have to have this traffic to Kampara, to, to Morago, to what? No, let all the diseases be handled in Ntunga Mo, Mtibesha too, that's what they, they used to call Ntunga Mo, the sub-county. The sub-county where I, I, I was born. Now, finally, in Mr. Gorobi's speech, there was one thing which I think we may have to look at. The 8% tax on the fish mole, I don't know how to pronounce it, but they call it enuni in Uganda, the fish bladder. That fish bladder apparently is very much in high demand in some places, in China especially. And with my people, you remember the other time in the State of the Nation, I told you that Uganda can earn $156 billion each year from this fish mob. Now, one of the problems we have, which I want to, to, to write to the President of China about, is that China has put a tax on this fish mob entering, entering China. So if you also put another tax here, I think we, we're undermining ourselves. I want to, 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 to write to the president of China to, 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 ask, to, 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 to ask him to remove the import tax on the fish mob. Now here you are putting a tax. That's, uh, uh, that's not correct. I think we should do. And we are going to introduce a very, I would work, we can create many jobs. The, the, the Minister of Fisheries of State, Helen Adoa, she knows the story. She knows the story uh, of, of how we, are going, we can use this fish mall to create a lot of jobs. So with these few words, I congratulate the Honorable Amos Rogorovi for reading the speech on my, on my behalf. He has uh, relieved me of the burden of having to read the speech myself. Uh, and, and, and you can see how I am learning how to exploit younger people. You take, exploit them, let them be the, to do the work. And, and you just watch from behind, you see how they are doing the work. Uh, the, many of these, some of these people I have nominated to you 
I have been studying them for a long time, and you will know more about them. Some of them have got very good qualities. The, the uh, loyalty, they don't have uh, and daddy, uh, eyes which are squinted. L looking this, you don't know whether he's looking at you or looking at. <laughs> Hard working, not corrupt. Uh, so I thank you. I congratulate the Honorable Amos Rugorov for his speech. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you very much.